Okay, act number two. <laughs> Huh? I think I'm good. Can you see me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Woo! First of all, I hear you. Sisters in creativity. Thank you. <laughs> all of you who are facing answers, et cetera, now. It's for you. So I don't need a microphone, right? Okay, so you've seen something amazing that movement getting into your body is about. So we're gonna start getting into our bodies. So besides doing movement therapy, I'm a Qigong instructor. So Qi is energy, we get from air we breathe, the foods we eat from our environment, everything in the universe is made out of energy. So we're gonna wake up our own energy, start by clapping. Tingling, warm. We're going to bring this to your body. Bring it to your hips. You get that light as far as you go. Up the inside. The belly, like the drop. Go down the other side, down the outside. Up the inside, the groin, the belly. Come up to the heart center, like heart, and like here, you vibrate the chi your body. Bigger shoulder. And your cheek is really nice and rosy. Loosen up the jaw. Third finger to the third eye. Relax your mind. Relax breathing. And then put your finger at the top of the head. The bike. We visualize the golden cord lifting you up to the heaven. Up, 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 up. Now wake up your brain. Good afternoon, brain. How are you doing today? Wake up all those brain cells. Tap, tap, tap. Fingers go down the backside. The elbows up. So you get a nice stretch. Then you're going to get the upper back and the middle back of your kidneys. I want you to vibrate your kidneys. I want to hear you vibrate your kidneys. Get the tail to stick over the up. Go down the back side of your legs. Up the front side. Up to your heart. Wake up the inner arm and the outer arm. Around the shoulder, around the breast, release negativity out. Other hand to the belly, smiling. Up to your heart. Wake up the inner arm and the outer arm around the shoulder, around the breast, the stagnant energy out. You feel more alive? So you're welcome to stand or sit. It's up to you because the next part, we're going to bounce. So if you can't stand, that's fine. Whatever you can. But we are bouncy, bouncy. So when you're bouncing, we're getting energy in your body. And I'll tell you, when you go through therapy for treatment of cancer, you lose a lot of energy. And what we want to get it back inside. So shoulders forward, oh, I lost my energy. Shoulders back, how do I get it back? Shoulders forward, let go. Oh, whoa, it's me. Why is this happening to me? And back, I can handle this, I hope so. And forward, just let it go. All oh, this worry, this frustration, this anger, what is going on? Let it go. And back. And I bring the wrists up. So the wrists and the ankles are considered gateways to chi in your body. So we're waking up your chi of the chi gates. So we're just bouncy, bouncy. And now to the side, I want to learn to fly. I want to fly high. One hand up, one hand down. And the other side. Sometimes life is up and sometimes it's down, right? So experience it sometimes in this way and sometimes in that way. It's all part of life. It's not all ropes and roses. Now go to one side and the other side. So we're just like you're riding a horse, you're sort of bouncing around, you're getting chi in your body. And I'll tell you, I needed to do this when I was going through chemo because they say when you go through chemo, she, the chemo doesn't go to where it needs to go. You have to move your body so that it will go to where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of this. Now do your own hokey pokey. So there's no right or wrong way. It just let it happen. 
So just get that chi in your body, moving it all around, whatever you can do, just let it go, let it go, let it go, and stop. Feel more energy in your body. Whee! Good. Okay. Another thing about chemo. Not everybody goes through chemo, but I did. 18 months of it. And besides losing my hair and all this stuff, I developed neuropathy. And so I got sensations in my hands and feet. It was pretty crazy, waking up in the middle of the night. So I learned how to do things through the five elements in Chinese medicine. So first of all, imagine fire, fire energy. So you're going to notice in the gallery that I have a lot of dragons. And the red dragon is the fire dragon, and it's for your heart. Filling your heart with love, passion, and compassion for others. Feel that fire energy we all have. Now, when the fire burns out, it becomes ash and part of Mother Earth. So let yourself just like the earth down. Letting yourself feel the feet, the earth connected. The color is earthly color. And when your earth energy is strong, we feel strong, content, nourished, satisfied to help us overcome overthinking, obsessive thoughts, worry. So just let go of that worry in your body as we're connecting to the earth. Now, out of the earth come the metals. The metal energy is for the lungs. So I want you to imagine like a bright, sun and rays and oxygen filling your lungs so we're going to feel the energy expanding around you and the lung energy the metal elements so when our lungs are strong we have lots of energy and will power we can do most anything with strong lungs to help overcome times of sadness grief and depression Okay, so the metal element, when it melts, becomes like water. The water element is for the kidneys. It's dark blue or black. And when our kidneys are strong, we are courageous. We are alert. We have patience. They help us overcome times of sadness, grief. No, no, that was uh, da, 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 da. let go of fears and anxieties. So we want that water energy to move through us so we can get rid of the fears and anxieties. Now then the water waters, the wood element. The wood element is for the liver, for purification. And the wood, imagine a tree growing strong, rising from the earth, rising a strong, healthy tree. And when our liver is strong, Everything flows freely. Our emotions are balanced. Life is flowing free. My heart is open for loving kindness, forgiveness, understanding. They help us to overcome times of anger, frustration, resentment, and stress. Then the wood becomes fuel for the fire, and the fire begins again. So that is five elements in Chinese medicine. So when you see the different a dragon, you'll know their correlation. Now, one more thing that really helped me was when I was feeling this neuropathy. Did you feel more energy in your body already? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I was really having a hard time with my feet going numb and my fingers going numb. So I went online and found some exercises and realized, oh, they can relate to the five elements. So we're going to start with fear. Imagine you all heard, got the news, you've got cancer. I want to say oh, alert, like I want you to fear, like oh, I want you to feel that surprise, that fear. This is for your kidneys going, ah, I'm freaking out. I want you to feel that. You can make sound, whatever. Why ah, me? Ah, 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 ah. Okay, now take a moment and just feel what that did for you already. And more circulation in your body, like we've woken up the kidneys. Okay, the next part, once we've got that, it's like, I'm so angry. Why well, just have to do it? No, this can't be happening to me. 
express my emotions. I'm not covering them up. I really expressed and felt everything. The next part is for the lungs. So I'm going to breathe into the lungs that expand. And then I'm going to breathe that. I'm going to focus. What do I need to do to heal? Breathe into the lungs. And you can allow the tears and the emotions to come. And on the breath out, I'm going to focus again. And just breathe in. That life energy. Focus. And again. And focus. And once I have a focus of how I'm going to heal, I'm going to ground myself and say, I'm going to get well. I'm going to take whatever it takes. Be strong. Take whatever it is that you need to earth yourself and plant the seeds and do what you need to do. I change my life completely to get rid of this. So whatever it is, feel that uh, into the earth, connect. Uh, uh, relax and feel that earthbound energy in your body. And the last one is the fire for the heart, unconditional love and joy and self-care, self-nourishment. Let yourself breathe and receive. So that's the five elements mm -hmm. that I put to help the neuropathy. And I'll tell you, I wake up in the middle of the night, and in the middle of the night, I go, I didn't want to wake them up. <laughs> but I did all these movements and I could get through the night. So these things are not, you don't have to answer to, to get this, but these are things I discovered. There are so many lessons I learned during cancer. I mean, I am much stronger, healthier, positive, grateful. I mean, my life is so much better than it was before. I learned so much and I'm so grateful I get to teach it to my students. I get to share it with all of you. I have a lot to share that I have discovered by going through the depths of it all. Mm -hmm. So now sit down. I'm going to read you just a little bit with your time here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to read you just a little bit about my cancer journey. Uh, you feel a little more alive in your body? Okay. And now let's see if I can do this without um, my glasses. And then at the end, and I have somebody pass this out at the end of my talk, just so that everybody gets one of these. Okay. Spirit Garden, healing cancer through the arts. These pieces that you will see describe my cancer healing journey. It has been an intense, difficult, life-changing path. My spirit garden has been my sanctuary and source of refuge. During the 18 months of active cancer treatments, my life changed 360 degrees. And I managed and survived all the traumatic side effects, plus COVID. For years, I had a daily healing practice of yoga, qigong, walking, swimming, teaching in my spirit garden which is adorned with ceramic sculptures, which you'll see in the gallery. Working in ceramics has always been my mode of expression, and it transformed into necessary therapy to counteract the neuropathy in my hands. I was told, use your fingers. I did a lot of clay. You'll be able to see a lot of it, some in this room and some out there. It's like clay was my mode of keeping it going. So I thought I was living a pretty healthy life beforehand. Mostly vegetarian, health conscious of what I ate and didn't eat. I resolved health issues with supplements, um, monthly acupuncture. I avoided doctors and mainstream medicines, instead thriving on holistic and natural cures and traditional Chinese medicine. I was certain that if I ever really got sick, I would do it the alternative way. I was sure that's what happened. 
But during the pandemic, my husband discovered a lump in my breast. My Kaiser doctor confirmed I had breast cancer. I cried for weeks. I was in shock. I immediately investigated all the alternative methods in the United States, Canada, um, Mexico, and I signed up for Hope for Cancer in Mexico. I was set to go. But my surgeon and oncologist warned me my cancer was very aggressive, fast growing, and I had no term for alternative methods. And my whole belief system went crashing down because I knew how I was going to take care of myself. I thought maybe. Well, desperate, I sought out a second opinion. At uh, UCSF, I found a doctor who does sometimes do alternative treatments. Um, his name is Akshi, which in Hebrew means I will listen. <laughs> I did listen. And uh, he told me that my cancer was too fast growing and I really didn't have that. So because I listened to him, I surrendered and changed my course of treatment to conventional medicine. I wanted to live for my children, my grandchildren, and uh, for my husband, my rock of salvation. I mean, I wanted to live. So, uh, and my husband has been there every step of the way in so many ways. So, I mean, I, I felt very supportive. So, however, with traditional medicine, I found, I formed a complementary <coughs> healing team. I said, I'm not just going to do this conventional way. So my team was, um, head was my acupuncturist I've had for over 20 years, Dr. Yun Cheng, guidance from the Pine <coughs> Street Clinic. My team included verbal therapy, massage therapy, physical therapy, energetic healing, as well as nutritional guidance. Mm -hmm. I did it all. Acupuncture three times a week. I mean, everything. <coughs> Swimming daily in my heated pool and practicing and teaching aqua qigong were my favorite therapies for relief from the physical and emotional symptoms of the cancer treatments. Um, my greatest salvation was and still is mindful Jewish meditation and, dealing, and, and having feeding practices, daily practices. I was so fortunate to have ongoing support from women from our Roche Kodesh group. There's a group of women who are here that we met monthly, and I'll tell you, having that support was, you know, I was not alone. <laughs> and we helped each other through all the processes. So besides that group, and Derry, uh, Larry and Diane Yermick, also members here, had a weekly Jewish mindful meditation group on Zoom during the pandemic. And I'll tell you, during chemo, being in, in that room and getting getting done, I'm watching Zoom, our, our group, and they're there to support me. It happened to be on Wednesdays when I got treatment and Wednesday was the meditation group. So, I mean, they helped me through. The hours that I was stuck there were filled with support and love and um, self-care and self-love. And I also, I have two other um, meditation groups, Jewish meditation groups. So, I mean, I kept, I surround, I created an environment that was supportive. Like they talked about in there, feeling alone. I was not alone for a minute. Not during going through chemo because I was going to my meditation group. I felt totally surrounded. And also I never stopped teaching, never stopped teaching Qigong. And I have students here that kept on seeing me every week through Zoom. I never stopped teaching. And so I had the support from all my students and um, I just felt really cared for I mean, on so many levels. So yeah, you don't want to be alone when you go through this. You really want to create a community and feel that you are supported. It is so important. Okay, so a few other things I need to tell you. So, uh, da, 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 da. so in addition to my Jewish roots, I've been greatly influenced by Chinese culture and traditional medicine. So I was born in the year of the water dragon. Dragons are strong, powerful, wise creature, and they transform negative energy into positive energy. So just 
doing my dragon, letting every joint of the body move, kept me from freezing into the states that I could have been caught at. So I used my dragon and I created dragon more and more and bigger and bigger. I mean, I did the biggest project I'd ever done six foot long, long not tall, but long <laughs> dragon. It took about eight kiln loads um, to get the pieces in that I did it. And uh, there's a nightlight connected. So it's gone 200, uh, 24 hours a day. It's there to protect me. Mm -hmm. So in the daytime, it looks at me and at night it's there shining. So I have 24 hour protection. And even though cancer's gone, I'm still being protected. Okay, let's get a few more things here. So in my, you can see in the um, exhibit and um, when we're done here, we'll be taking you through the exhibit to talk about some of that stuff. And but so you'll see the, the five element dragon fountain where water pour, flows freely through the different organs of the body, where everything's in flow. I've got the five dragon totem pole, finding balance in my life. I've got the five headed dragon and five headed dragons means you're out of your body, you're in the head, all these different things. And when you're not connected to your body, habit comes in. And that I created after my husband's bypass surgery, where I thought I was gonna lose him. And the nurses said, in order to heal, become vegan. So as I was looking into the, that whole thing, I found the five-headed dragon and I used it and created my own. So you'll be able to see these different pieces that were made out of that. Um, let's see, some of the other pieces you'll see, and then I'll talk about it when I'm in there, is um, going through the, so I have a, a one dragon who's just feeling content and satisfied, nourished, earthbound. The next one is, the five-headed dragon is like out of body, out of mind, not knowing where I am. And then I have going, riding the chemo waves. I'll tell you, chemo ain't fun. Um, they, they give you um, steroids to get you through it. So you're on a high and then you go crashing down and your body goes through all this stuff. It was, anyway, so the piece is called riding the chemo waves. I first made a little one, it wasn't big enough. So I made a second one. So I've got two, you know, it's like riding those waves. <coughs> Another one was doing chemo and radiation. You are burning. Um, whew. Um, so when it began the chemo, when I was burning internally, it was during the California fires and we were all wearing our masks. Mm -hmm. I was burning inside and breathing it outside. It was just, um, so I created um, a figure as like a burning tree, a tree on fire. But at the end, life comes out. And, you know, I, I survived. I lost all my hair. I lost my fingernails. I lost a lot. It's all come back. But anyway, so you understand what that piece is about with um, surviving the fires. Okay, what's after that? After the fires was thriving and surviving. I'm still alive and I'm still here and I'm just feeling that. And then on another wall, you'll see some pictures of um, yoga figures of two people connected. And that was me and my husband supporting me through. So you'll see that the love and support that I have is so important. So that is those sculptures. Okay, I'm almost done here talking about it. Okay, the next part is I have um, in the center between my two tables, you'll see a tree of life with doves on it and an olive branch. I originally made that piece without the olive branches. It was during when Ukraine was being bombed and all the hospitals and the babies and the, all that stuff. And we were all just in that horror. I was going through my own bloody mess you know, painful mess during that. And I created that because I had to express it. So the original, now where the olive branches are, I had blood oozing out. And instead of the Israeli flag, I had the Ukrainian flag. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I made it as my O2. I mean, I just, I had to do something. And so I created that piece. And then a few months later, I was asked to create a piece for, um, I lived on the kibbutz for uh, over 20 years, I was asked to create an art piece for the exhibit of um, how many years the kibbutz? 75? 
or it's a hundred, a hundred years to the kibbutz, a hundred years to the kibbutz. So I recreated, I took out the blood, put in the olive branches. And um, so anyway, you can see that piece as well. So that is my transforming the negative into the positive. So now I can look at it again. <laughs> um, and then I have five um, goddesses, um, the goddesses, five Jewish heroines from the Bible. And I'm not gonna, you can read it. You'll see what they are, who they are. Um, the one that I'll have to say is De Devorah. I'm Devorah, Dub is Devorah, where she was um, a warrior and a judge and she puts down her sword and she lifts up a dove. And this was me, courage. I could make it through. So without her, I mean, she was like my, I can make this through. So you'll see the different um, women there and each of them have a story to tell that was my process. I think that is as much as I wanted to say about the pieces you'll get to see them yourself. That I have one more thing we're going to do. Did you all get a handout? Yeah. Okay, they're going around. They're going around. Okay, well, maybe you'll want to maybe share if I don't have enough, so maybe every other person. So, one of the things that are helpful for me is the loving kindness meditation practice. So, um, I'm going to sing to you what I sing to myself daily, and during my cancer, I sang this a lot throughout the day to help me. So, I'm going to sing you the first three verses. Then on the fourth verse, we're going to sing it together, but instead of may I be, we'll say may you be, we'll do it together. And then the last time we'll say may we be, so we're all connected. So, um, okay, you may want to share, I don't know if I'm going to, but anyway, I'm going to start, you don't need to read it, but we'll start. Here we go. My loving kindness meditation. May I be well. In mind and body, may I find peace and inner peace. May I be free from fear and worry. May I accept myself just as I am. May I be strong for those I care for with kindness and respect and respond without judgment or need to fix or mend. And may the light of loving kindness shine upon tears, fears, and pain, creating rainbows of compassion and comfort as it may. So we're going to do the first, the next verse, we're going to say, may you. Are you ready? May you be well in mind and body. May you feel ease and inner peace. May you be free of fear and worry. May you be safe with hope and love. Now we're going to do a we. May we be well in mind and body. May we go peace and inner peace. May we be free of fear and worry. May we be safe. With hope and love. <clears throat> so, this is, I sing daily whenever I need it. And um, it's like something I can share with you. And you can make your own words, your own tunes, whatever you want. But things like this have helped me. Mm -hmm. And um, this is definitely came out of the Jewish meditation groups. Um, I put the, the music to it, but it's just my expression, and we're all connected. We all feel pain. We all have these things that happen to us. So that's my formal meditation. One more thing we're going to do. No, no. Okay. <sighs> so anyway, that's what we're going to do. But we're going. What we're going to do now is, if you have a few questions, we'll do a little bit of questions and answer. And then you'll have time to go through, get yourself something to eat or drink. You can look at some of the different art that I've made during my cancer treatments. Um, so I have little things to sell if you're interested, but I also have my whole Judaica. If, you, if there's anything you like, take a picture of the form and you may want to order it for our future. For Venmo. Who knows what. Venmo. Venmo. It could be Venmo. Yeah, the ordering is Venmo is if you want to buy something now or cash. 
or anyway, the real. Debbie is in charge of that part. She's in the corner there. So uh, if you want to get something, then after the questions, I just want to say after our, our little questions and answers, I'm going to run down to the gallery with my um, my Zoom, and I'm going to take the people who are watching Zoom through my part, and and then. Eileen will slowly bring a group over, and when I'm done, then she'll give her presentation, her verbal docent. And then again, I will let more people, I'll take you through. Anyway, that's sort of like. So the refreshments will be here. You're between now and the gallery. Although, anytime. So we'll go from this room to that room, step by step. And the question and answer can be really for any party. Come over mm -hmm. here. I need, yeah. you, I need you over here so you can be seen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any questions or comments? Okay. So I just wanted to mention that I also went through something somewhat similar. Okay. Here he is. Okay. So. Um, I'm still technically in um, active treatment um, and had a similar diagnosis as Dove, um, although my chemotherapy was not for 18 months, it was, it was three, but it was, it was 12 weeks, it was still, uh, there was still a lot going on. I learned a lot and uh, I am a visual artist and I did some drawings that helped me get through the fear. And so I brought a notebook with some drawings mm -hmm. on, that are on the table there that I, I, I brought to show. Um, and another thing that I did that helped me get through was I got interested in, um, in beaded jewelry made out of crystals mm -hmm. and the healing um, art, the, the, the healing powers of different crystals. Um, and so I brought some of those as well. And um, if anybody's interested, I have, you know, some to sell and I have cards there that you can take if you want to order something. So um, I think that, oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is I was in close contact with both of these ladies because they had been through their experiences before I had. And the way that I help to um, make a con or connect myself with the community that was already there was I sent out a mass email with everybody and let them know as soon as I had my diagnosis, which was almost a year ago, not quite a year ago, in um, last May, June, last June. So, um, and I put up on the wall around me emails of um, uh, words of encouragement from people who sent me emails and lots of people said, uh, called me up as well. But um, so I, I can, I, <laughs> I actually brought uh, those to show as well, but you don't need to see those if you, you know, if you weren't just sitting looking at the drawings and the deeds. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that. And, um, they'll be here, but I'm, I'm not going to leave them up in a gallery anywhere. So I just want to let you know. Ah, I'm Diana Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yes, Gail. Um, okay, so I uh, recently had a mammogram and they saw something that wasn't there before. And I was very surprised because I walked up and I thought, well, I'm 85, something's going to get me sometime. You know, maybe it won't be this time, hopefully. So I'm going through the process of finding out. But what I really wanted to say was, I had a quadruple bypass surgery. I mean, you may even remember when, almost 20 years, 21 years ago. And I have every page that was unfair in print. I kept every one of them. And it's so wonderful to look at that and to see the people, you know, and what they had. And I had it all over my room. You know, now I just have it in the file. So, um, and thank you for what you're doing. But I, I'd like to say two things. One is we will hold you in our hearts for this diagnosis. 
And the second for me, Karen Bridge. I had no idea people felt about me the way they do. And it's such a blessing to read these thoughts. Mostly we don't put them to words. And people were able to write what that said. Well, I'm not there yet. I don't know. When I said the biopsy, you were. Okay. And hopefully I won't even see it. Karen Bridge for me was also my lifesaver. I mean, so many people, I could just at one time say what I was feeling, what was going on, and get the support. And I didn't have to answer telephone calls, or emails. It was a one way to put it out there and get the support we needed. Okay, uh, Carol, did you want to say anything? Yeah, I think um, you, you both know that I got high cancer diagnosis in two grades. Well, you come back. Come on. No, I'm kind of private to my surprise. I thought of myself as an extrovert. She's one of us. She's yeah. Of us. <laughs> I'm a sort of shy extrovert when it comes to vulnerability. So um, uh, I'm a therapist. I like to take care of other people, you know? And um, so I've been very quiet and reached out to only really um, my oldest, most trusted friends, many of whom don't live around here. And it's sort of halfway through my immunotherapy. I have the same um, it's her two positive breast cancer. I had this positive feeling I'm going to get through it. And who knows? You know, and who knows? Um, so it's inspiring to be here halfway through. It's like, okay, this one I have to do on my own, my way, you know, something about that. And in my timing. And I may, I'm a writer, a, a private writer, and it may be Caring Bridge. And, you know, I have a journal, but there's something about being visible. That's you and reaching out to people I don't know. So thank you for your inspiration. We'll see you again. Any other yes, questions? Yes. Thank you for the inspiration. That's both very inspired. And I'm wondering if that made me more work for me. If I knew if it had that last entry, we somehow made it for a small for a document. Thank you. Send to other people. And uh, I know you, I know you had those exercises. I wonder if they're written someplace. Yeah. yeah. I, I have some of my, my aqua chigong um, okay. stuff is on the table there. If anybody's interested in my favorite practice, some people have done that and they're still going to do it with me. The most <laughs> and, I did have a question that just popped up. That I can mean, wait if you're in the middle of the conversation. Let us finish. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so if you're interested in any of my work, go to dragonartstudio.com. I've got my whole, I've got everything. And if you want to email me, it's dub at dragonartstudio.com. And I teach all year round and um, I'd love to share this stuff. And some, I have many students who are here and, yeah. and friends. And anyway. Wanted to share that. So, any other question? Uh, well, I should both have one, and then, and then um, Carol wanted to say something. I just wanted to say that as somebody who's been on the outside as an observer of all of this and a friend, it's just been um, so inspiring on a different level. Of course, I felt so sad and scared when you both were ill, and now they're all over. And, Diana, I mean, it's just, it's frightening from the outside looking in, but your bravery has been, and your perseverance has just been, it's, it's been like I've been through the experience. And I realize that a lot of what you've been through, it's not just about illness, it's about our lives. It's about how we live our lives, how we keep ourselves going, how we think about things and um, take care of ourselves. I mean, it, I can relate to it in different ways. You know, oh God, I haven't had these horrible illnesses. So just in the emotional ups and downs of life and the relationships we have with people. I mean, you have been, you have taught me so much through this process. I wish to God that you didn't have to go through all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how to say that, but I wish you didn't. And yet you shared so much with all of us that it's just been, it's just been incredible. So many of the blessings for that. And um, and to have you both be a part of our group, you know, there's several groups represented here. I mean, this is one part. To have you still come and be a part of it 
can share with us, it would also have been, it's just like, I, I can't even express how grateful I feel and the professors feel that same way too. To be kind of on this journey with you in a different way. But anyway, we all love you so much. So thank you. <laughs> Responses back from from a number of friends who I didn't know had been through a cancer experience, and I I made a list of all the people I knew, um, and that list is now seventeen people long who are survivors. I mean, it was quite inspiring, you know. So I and you'll see one of my drawings over here. I have, and this is one of the things that helped me mentally get through when I realized that because I had lost a lot of uh, relatives in the past and, and some close friends due to cancer. So I was scared to death, um, even though mine was a relatively minor, um, you know, stage one when it was caught. But I had uh, this, this scale of, let's see, how many people did I know who died versus how many of who survived, and when the scale tipped dramatically, that was when I knew, okay, I can do this. You know, I can do this, and it, it was a big, a, a big thing. And and we don't talk about this unless somebody brings it up. Nobody wants to talk about the big C. <laughs> So as someone who's been part of this support uh, group for these two beautiful women and for Diana, um, I, I just want to say it's been a, a, I felt it a privilege really to be part of that. And yet today I learned more than I knew before, significantly more. And it, it has made me more confident that were something to happen to me and there is colon cancer in my family history big time on both my mother and grandmother had it. And uh, my mother did not survive it, although she was in an advanced stage. My grandmother had a colostomy first. But regardless, that, that shadow is in my life. And so to, um, to be part of the support process for my community here, and to learn more of the details of all the things that you have done gives me an amazing amount of confidence that I could come out the other side as well. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for that. And I also really appreciated, Doug, your bringing in the musical piece because as a musician and singer myself, I know how much music is part of that healing, can be part of that healing process. And it is something that I am personally interested in developing uh, and sharing with others, music as a healing journey. I, and uh, I, um, I actually have a, a, a little, I do an improvisational musical thing now and then. So for all of you who, who might have some interest in that afterwards, approach me and I can tell you more about that and can email you more information about that. But just to advocate on behalf of music, whether it's improvisational or whether it's simply taking your favorite music that is not improvisational, but is something that brings you comfort and inspiration and integrating that into your healing process. Um, I'm interested in both of those avenues. So thank you very much for joining us. Okay, I'm gonna run down to the gallery to give my first quick tour. And then slowly Eileen will bring those of you who are ready to have her tour. So I'm moving fast because I know people 
Yeah. I'm doing mine while you're collecting people. I'm going to do mine quickly for the people on Zoom. So you can bring people slowly and I will do my thing. I'm taking people over. Huh? So I, somebody open the doors. Take the bench back. Uh, the stool home. Take the stool. What stool? Where is the stool? Okay. We're walking to the gallery for those who have patiently listen through what we're doing. This is called Shofar, where um, a dear friend of mine, Susie Colliver was the architect. And this is actually be my third show um, exhibit in this gallery. And we are walking through. So on the outside is the connection it will be things that Eileen will be talking about and she'll come down shortly. But I'm gonna first take you on my section so you can see the art in this beautiful gallery. So we're gonna start with my connection to my husband in so many different ways of, of love and support and um, holding me together for my stability, confidence, my confidant, the love we share, the heart we share together. So this is one of the pieces or one part of the pieces. And here is actually my trophy. I made it through cancer, so I feel whole again. And so I wanted to show the wholeness of life that I did make it through. I'm gonna take you through slowly. Um, so this is the gallery has our, um, the sign and then what I, I wrote to you, I read to you before, so people can come in who weren't here before. This is my big dragon, my six foot um, dragon. And um, so this dragon is 24 hours seen through night lights and daytime. And it's my protector and um, it's in my spirit garden. Then I'm going to show you, this is my dragon who is um, I call it contentment. He's happy. Things are good. Life energy holding this magic ball. And then we move to the five headed dragon of disharmony and just feeling that life is pretty crazy. Um, the disharmony inside of what goes on inside of you. And then we come to riding the chemo waves. So I started with a little one, a dove is trying to ride the waves and then they got bigger and 18 months of chemo was pretty traumatic, but I did survive. But during that time of chemo, I got burnt. Also during the California fires. And so there's this burning sensation of the hair came out, the nails came out, but the phoenix survives and there's flowers emerging. Even the back side, I don't know if I could show you this angle, but there's flowers opening in the back. Um, so there's a lot of blossoming even after the trauma. And then we move over to thriving and surviving, holding the lotus or holding the flower and just feeling really that connection that I'm rooted, I'm strong, and I can still flower and be whole. Now I'm going to move on, moving slowly back to the piece that I talked about, um, my totem pole of the three doves. The first dove that start at the bottom is showing the dove with the heart. And I had three children in the kibbutz. So the, there's three eggs. The dove is on three eggs. I found my love there. So my love is there, my husband. And then we move up and this dove here is taking flight, really learning how to create the artistic life that I develop in the kibbutz, my profession. And this life, this, this um, dove is really, I made as a homecoming when I came back to the kibbutz and I really felt that connection to, um, to the kibbutz and to Israel. So that is this piece that I said originally I made in tribute to um, um, the Ukraine. The next piece you're gonna see is my totem 
um, where I have the earth dragon on the bottom. Out of the earth come the metals, and the metal out that metals come the um, water. Water is the wood, and then wood becomes fuel for the fire. And this is my um, finding balance with this dragon sculpture. And I brought it in a photograph instead of all the different pieces. And I'm gonna move back on forward. We have here uh, Jacob's Ladder where um, the angels are going up and down and trying to wrestle with God, trying to find a way. For me, it was like, what treatment am I gonna go through? Am I gonna go this way or am I gonna go that way? What's going to help me through? How am I gonna survive? And then I have my guardian angel, I call Grace for Gratitude that I did make it through and she was there watching me through my treatments. When I made her, she was my protector. Next to her, I have Miriam. Miriam crossed the Red Sea and with her tambourine and led the women in song and dance. And um, so it's just feeling the joy that I made it through. The next one is hope. It's about hope and giving life. And it's Leah from the Bible where she was hoping to have children. And um, God graced her with being pregnant. And she and her sister had uh, 12 children. The 12 tribes of Israel came from Leah. Okay, then we have Queen Esther. And Queen Esther for me is compassion. Um, she shows faith and courage. Despite her fears, she bore the weight of her people and her destiny risked her life. And this is to me is compassion that I've needed for myself and for others. And then we come to um, Devorah putting down her sword and lifting up, um, lifting up the dove for peace. And then the last piece I have is in my garden. And in the garden here, we've got my five dragons um, all flowing together. The water flows out into the earth and I hear people coming. So I think it's time for um, to have the next gallery showing of um, Eileen. So we're gonna move on. So that was my piece, my gallery. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm gonna move on so that, um, take you through the gallery with Eileen. Dub, I don't know if you could hear anybody on Zoom, but that was fantastic. It's Louise, you're amazing. Oh, awesome. Okay. We are ready. <laughs> okay, we're now moving on to Eileen. Okay, I mean, you were on. Well, we're waiting till everybody gathers. Okay. Just go gather everybody. Go, go, go. Well, go her. Go her. Bring them on over. Go. Go get the rest. Oh, go get the rest. Oh, go get the rest. Oh, okay. Get the other people. All right. I don't think they're eating. Okay. People are, people are still eating. Well, then you can do a second time if they're still eating. I think they're it's because people are confused. Some are getting, so I just want to get everything. I like that. People are confused. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't take this one. Just... Okay. I'm going to well, sign off anyway, just to show you. No, 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 no. Take, no. take the rest. Just well, you can stop and start. I don't know. I can't stop and start. Anybody want to say anything, any comments about the show, what you've heard so far? Anything you would like to? The exhibit? Yeah, well, the exhibit, I'll tell well, any about what we did so far. Just wonderful. I really appreciate you showing up. <laughs> I think they want to just still eat and drink. And okay, yeah, I know. Okay. Um, I, as soon as she's done, I'll talk about mine. And then I'll, oh, so I will turn off the, um, the, I've already taken the Zoom people on my place. And that as soon as Eileen's done talking, then I'll turn off the Zoom and I'll talk you through. 
Okay. Okay. Yala, yala. Okay. I wasn't a camp counselor, but I organized the stuff. So. Okay. Okay, Eileen, I think this is your group. Okay. Yeah, so this part's mine. Dub and I have half and half of the gallery. So it starts here. And it's got our heels is the name of it. These are some photos of me. This is the, the mask that I made. This is me in radiation. This is me ringing the bell radiation with the mask. And that's me going for a walk. <laughs> and these are some of the, this is all from the Caring Bridge, some I've read. This was a New Year's card. This is the decorated room. Uh, these are the grandchildren's finger paints. That's me, I think right after that. It's amazing because they cut your whole throat and then they use like a glue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, so that's that. And then here, it starts here. I'm so glad you're here. So this is not necessarily in order, but this is just from the Caring Bridge. So, so come on in. So you can just read. And just take some time. I think just reading these. Jeff also kept a running commentary of the whole journey. And I think just take some time and have a look, and then Dove's part is ready. Okay. Thank you, Eileen, for sharing that. So take your time to go through. I'm going to say goodbye to everyone on Zoom, and then I'll take you through my part here. No, that's okay. I've already taken okay. them through. So anyway, these, these are audience. You can say hi and bye. <laughs>